Welcome to Living Medicine, the podcast. I'm Selena Van Orden, your host, and I'm an Ayurvedic doctor living and working in the UK. This podcast is focused on having meaningful conversations which expand our awareness on wellness. By applying the wisdom of Ayurveda as a living medicine, philosophy, and interpretation of nature's intelligence, we'll seek to understand healing in the modern era. Hello and welcome to Living Medicine. I am delighted to be here today with Dr. Brian Ardis, who is a retired chiropractor, certified acupuncturist and nutritionist. He lives in Dallas with his wife and eight children, and he set up two healing centers across the states, treating thousands of people. He is a tireless researcher seeking to weed out deception in health and medicine and provide truth and healing where institutional medicinal systems fall short. Welcome, Dr. Brian Ardis. Lovely to have you here. Well, I'm so excited to be here, and I hope your audiences are just as thrilled as I am to spend time with you. Amazing. So today I really want to talk to you particularly about salt. There's a lot of chat at the moment across social media about salt, and it's as if the narrative feels like it's really changing right now. And I've read some very interesting stuff that you've said on salt. So I really want to get into that. Um, so my first question about it all, I guess, is how did we get to where we are today with the narrative on salt being so bad for us? Yeah, I think uh, the number one thing I want people to recognize is about four years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to let the whole world know every single lie I can think of in medicine. And the number one lie I actually talked about and produced my very first like organic show on for the Dr. Artist show was uh, salt is bad for you, was the number one lie medical doctors tell you. I mean, that's number one. Now, the reason why this has been so profound in our belief systems now, truly, I mean, if you ask anybody, is salt good or bad for you? Everybody will say bad for you. And the thing is, they've all been told by media by their medical professionals, by every health authority on the earth, that salt is bad for you. And if you eat more salt than you should, <laughs> then you're going to develop strokes. It's a risk factor for heart attacks. You're going to increase your blood pressure, which of course makes all those uh, disease factors all more real and possible. So you have had a pummeling and a repeated lie over and over and over by everybody in unison, the pharmaceutical industry, the medical journals and scientific journals, your medical doctors, all of newscast, radio announcements, everybody, magazines, they're constantly pummeling you. And then you get the processed foods. They even have like ribbons across cereals that say low sodium food. They want you to believe that saltless food is better for you than consuming salt. And this has been no different than the propaganda that Dr. Joseph Goebbels in Nazi Germany said, he said, as the father of propaganda, he says, and I quote, tell a lie loud enough and repeat it often and people will start to believe it. <laughs> well, they've been repeating the lie that salt is bad for you for decades. In fact, my entire life and probably your entire life. So as we hear this lie repeated, we often gravitate to believe it. And so what it takes is individuals with an open mind to actually ask the question, is the statement being made in the real world, is it true or not? Is it true or is it false? Am I being lied to or is this true? Well, if you have followed anything that I've done, uh, when I get to salt, which I've had a big problem with for a long time, do you want to know what my problem was with salt? As every medical doctor, cardiologist, as Cheerios was putting it on the front of their cereal boxes, Low sodium food lowers cholesterol because you're eating cardboard and it's not even food. I mean, when you see these lies over and over and over in your face, I always want to know, well, is that true or is that false? Now, I also like to observe life, mm -hmm. like watch life and go, you know what? The medical doctors are telling me that salt's bad for me, but what are they doing with salt? Okay. And all, all I had to do is ask myself that. Well, did they do anything with salt? Why would I ever question their narrative that salt's bad for you? You know, it's shocking. All you got to do is close your eyes and actually remember every time you looked at anybody in a hospital room, in a hospital bed, all of them in unison 
only have one thing being pumped into their veins the entire time they're right. in the medical building. Wow. Yeah. All of them have an IV stand pumping saline, they call it, inside your veins of the your loved one or yourself the whole time you're under surgery, the whole time you're in an ambulance going to the hospital. To and save you're admitted, that life. Yeah. Every day that you're in there, they are pumping saline inside your body. And then I'll ask you, what is saline? What is it? Salt. It is salt water. All right. So the moment you're, you're, let's just say you have a heart attack. I'm telling you, they say nonstop that salt's bad for you. And salt increases your risk to develop high blood pressure, which then will become a risk factor for strokes and heart attacks. But okay, so you, can I stop you quickly? Can I stop you quickly? Why? Sure. Okay, well, just just pause you because this is way too interesting. All of this. Okay, so why in the first place have we been pummeled with this information? Now we have very different medical systems in our two countries, you know, seemingly um, in the US and the UK. Sure. But this this propaganda, as you call it, has been widespread worldwide, right? So oh, what yeah. what is at the root of that? Yeah. So you ready to know what it is? Shut up. What's the root of that? Uh, in 2016, this is all you need to know, actually. In 2016, Tel Aviv University in Israel conducted a study, 500,000 patients in 49 countries. It was the largest study ever done on high blood pressure. And they found 49 countries, 500,000 people, that the individuals who consumed the most salt every single day had the best blood pressure readings and the most normal blood pressure readings. And all the individuals who consumed three times the amount the FDA tells you you should consume salt every day, every person around the world that consumed three times that amount had better blood pressure readings than anybody okay. who took the FDA readings. Now, they publish in The Lancet in the UK where you are, The mm. Lancet is a medical journal. They publish the results of the study that the more salt someone consumes, the better their blood pressure is and the lower their risk factors for stroke and heart attack become. When you just asked me why and who benefits from this lie, why would they tell us this lie? Did you see that when that was published by The Lancet, did you see who threatened The Lancet with pulling their funding if they publish that study and don't retract it? No. The American Heart Association threatened The Lancet and told them, you publish that study, we're going to pull all of your funding. You have to retract that study. All right, so the next question for you is, why would the American Heart Association be angry at a medical journal for publishing a study, right. largest one ever done in history, proving that salt intake, the more salt you eat, the lower your risk factor for high blood pressure, strokes, and heart attacks is? Why is that a threat to the American Heart Association? Which, by the way, is the highest revenueing medical association in the whole world. What? Why would the American Heart Association threaten the the actual medical journal with the with their publishing of that study if they don't retract it? What's the threat to the American Heart Association if that truth was to get out? Tell tell me. The American Heart Association's ninety percent of all their funding comes from the pharmaceutical industry, the right. drug makers of high blood pressure drugs, and stroke drugs, and heart attack drugs. So if the majority of their funding comes to them from high blood pressure drug manufacturers like Merck, Pfizer, and others, of course they're going to see this journal as a threat and this article as a threat because if people started eating more salt in their diet and they read that study and medical doctors got a hold of that information and that truth, they would start telling their patients to eat more salt. Well, does Pfizer own salt companies? Not that I'm aware of. Does Merck own salt companies? Not that I'm aware of, but even if they did, salt is cheap and it's a natural resource that you can't patent typically unless you change its formula. So this was the ultimate threat to the American Heart Association is it will reduce sales and high blood pressure medications, stroke medications, and heart disease medications. If the truth gets out that salt in increased amounts than what the governments are telling us will reduce our risk of heart attacks and strokes. So where do, who did the lie benefit the most to tell all of society that salt is bad for you? 
and lower your salt intake. Who did it benefit from right. the beginning? Terrifying. The pharmaceutical the drug companies. companies. Yeah. The drug companies that make the high blood pressure drugs. Okay, so this is no different, and we're not going to stick on this topic. Mm-hmm. But in order to convince people that fat was bad for them, right. the drug companies had to lie to medical doctors and in scientific journals and tell them all that when human beings swallow anything with fat in it, their liver will convert that fat into cholesterol. And we have found that cholesterol, as it builds up in your blood, increases the risk of plaque, blood clots, strokes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Now, who is telling the medical doctors this? Oh, it just happened to be the same drug companies that just created a drug called statins that they figured out in animal studies lowers the amount of cholesterol the liver can make? Okay, this is what. So once they figured out they had a chemical that actually did in every single mammal they put it inside of it, lowered this thing called cholesterol, then the drug companies had to come up with a way to convince all the medical doctors to promote their drug that lowers cholesterol. Well, what's the best way to sell it to them? Tell them that the number one cause of death around the world typically, which is heart disease, is increased in risk by increased cholesterol. And so if you just tell the medical doctors that lie, they go like this, oh, sweet, so do you have a drug for that? Good, let me promote it. And will you give me incentives? And will you give me commissions and royalties? And yes, then all the medical doctors will tell you the same damn lie and they'll Uh, never look into it. And the truth is all along, I mean, how many of you have watched people doing keto diets and carnivore diets and just shredding weight? They lose weight, they're reversing diabetes, And this is them consuming protein and fat, increasing their cholesterol, increasing their fat intake. But what have we been told, especially throughout America, and I'm sure in the UK, what have we been told for 50 years? A low fat diet is good for you. Uh, This this whole thing is a lie. We have to reduce the amount of fat people consume to lower their cholesterol. And what has happened ever since? The more cholesterol drugs we sell, the lower the cholesterol levels go in this country and around the world the higher the incidence of strokes and heart attacks become. And in every single year, those numbers have gone up, that we've actually been listening to this lie and swallowing the pills. It's ridiculous. Well, let me just tell you the narrative here. Now, we're going to use this example and put it with salt. Okay? We're being lied to about salt. We're being lied to about fats that equal cholesterol. Okay? If you tell people that they have to lower their cholesterol and we have a pill to do it and it will protect you from having heart disease which everyone's being told this is hereditary and there's nothing you do to avoid it but take our drugs that's the other lie so now you're scared to death that you can't control it because your mom or dad or aunt somewhere had heart disease at one point you're going to have it your medical doctor's telling you unless you take this drug you start taking that drug what you guys don't know is that the moment you start taking the statin The statin drug itself lowers the amount of cholesterol your body can make no matter how much fat you're consuming. And did you know at home, everybody, that cholesterol is the backbone required by your hormone glands in your body to make most of your hormones? I mean, you need cholesterol to make testosterone, men. Guess what happens to most men when they start taking a statin drug? They can't have an erection and they have no sex ambition or drive. Well, where did that go? I mean, six months later, you're going to go to your medical doctor and tell them, look, doc, I'm glad my cholesterol numbers are better, but I just have no interest in sleeping with my wife. I I can't even get it up. And guess what the MD says? Oh, that's okay. You're in your 40s. This is normal for your age. It's called erectile dysfunction. Here is a little blue pill to help you with that. When in fact, the cholesterol drug you started six months ago doesn't allow your body to now make testosterone because you need cholesterol to make testosterone. And testosterone drives sex drive. It also increases blood flow. So now you can have an erection. So because they lied to you initially and said fat is bad for you, causes cholesterol to go up, which will cause you to have heart disease and increase your risk of that. Take this pill. You take that pill. Now you lower your amount of cholesterol. All the side effects after that are this. Men will no longer have any sex drive. Can't get an erection. Now they're going to go on Viagra, which is a drug to offset the side effects of the statin drug. And the low-fat diet that you're now on. Okay, that's one. Did you know serotonin, the hormone in every male and female's body, needs cholesterol to be made? Right. Okay, well, what does serotonin do to humans? It makes makes you feel happy. Yeah. And it makes you feel safe. 
So there's no anxiety or panic. Oh, really? All right. So now you can't make serotonin. Serotonin is your happy, feel good hormone. Now you can't make it because you don't have cholesterol to make enough of it. What are you going to report to your medical doctor within six months to a year after starting your statin drug? Right. You're going to tell them you're depressed, you're anxious, and guess what your MD's got to tell you? That's okay. This is normal. A lot of people experience this. A lot of people in my practice have this after six months of coming in here and getting their cholesterol checked. We put them on this drug, and now you can actually have another drug to offset the side effects of the cholesterol drug and the low-fat diet, and they can sell you more antidepressants than any other drug on the planet. And that is exactly what's happening and has been for the last 40, 50 years. So antidepressants are still the number one most prescribed drugs on the planet next to cholesterol drugs. All right, well, can't you see how that fits in? All right, so what happens when you tell the world to stop eating so much salt? Well, let me explain this to you. Your kidneys, your kidneys take all of your blood and they filter it into urine and they excrete all whatever it is that you don't need in the body. It removes all the excess water out of your body and cleanses the body. Okay. Your kidneys have cells inside of them to convert uric acid into urine and filter out your blood so you can urinate. Your kidneys can't even filter anything in your blood without these pumps doing their job. And these pumps are called sodium potassium pumps. Yeah. What is sodium? Salt. Salt. Okay, so these are called salt potassium pumps. Okay. Yeah. Well, your kidneys require salt to even work. Okay, so if you deprive the kidneys of salt, guess what happens to your kidney function? Do the pumps get better or worse? What do you think? They get worse. They get worse and they slow down. What happens when your body starts retaining water because your kidneys no longer can filter out urine out of your body? Do you retain water or lose more water? You retain more water. You retain it. Will the added water in your body put pressure on your blood vessels and on your heart or reduce it? Yeah, pressure. It increases it. Increased water, increased pressure. If you increase pressure, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? Yeah, increase. It goes up. Now, you're not eating salt and your blood pressure is going up. If you tell the whole society to restrict from the time you're born how much salt you consume... All of you, because you're mammals and designed the same way and all have salt potassium pumps in your kidneys, you all over time will produce high blood pressure. And guess what you've created? A whole society of people that are going to go to, into their medical doctor's clinic with dizziness, headaches, uh, fatigue, and your medical doctor's got to take your blood pressure and go, oh, your blood pressure's high. We got to actually give you a high blood pressure drug and make sure you don't eat salt, Mary. You got to lower your salt even from where it is now. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. And this is true. The FDA in America says the maximum amount of salt every day that the, an American should consume is 2,300 milligrams a day in every 2,400 hours or 24 hours. What does the American Heart Association say that's in the same country? It says we do not agree with the FDA's salt amount. They believe it should be 1,100 milligrams a day. That's less than half of what the FDA says. Right. Okay. How come they don't agree? That's really funny. The Tel Aviv University study in 2016, they published the lowest amount of salt a day that keeps your blood pressure normal, they found in their study of 500,000 people in 49 countries. The lowest daily intake that led to the most perfect blood pressure readings is 6,000 milligrams. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. It's 6,000 to 9,000. They even said as you get to 9,000 milligrams, the results of blood pressure were better. Okay, now this is important. I know that sounds crazy, but what what amount of salt is in every saline That's fluid bag in a hospital? To. Can we go back to this? Can you paint the picture again of the IV drip? Because I mean, we've got these two pictures now of the medical system where actually every day this is being used. Every patient, as you say, no matter what their situation or how critical their support is needed, whatever it is, they're put on an IV drip. Yeah, my mother-in-law is 93 years old. A year ago, she goes into the hospital after falling in the assisted living quarters. She goes in the hospital at midnight, taken there by ambulance. Young lady, her blood pressure was 280 over 180. Oh, my goodness. And this happened within 24 hours of her flu shot last year. Okay, within 24 hours, she falls, busts her head, has high blood pressure, and is in the hospital right after the flu shot was given to her last year. 
even though we told her not to. Everybody in the assisted living place was doing it. Peer pressure even exists in the 90-year-old community. <laughs> She's in the hospital now at midnight. I get there. There's no MD even doing the rounds. There's somewhere else in the hospital. There's no one coming. It's an hour before anybody gets in this little area that we're waiting in in the emergency room. When they take her by ambulance, put her right into this little room in the ER center, the very first thing they do, a nurse walks in, hooks up an IV saline bag, and then injects it into her veins and immediately does what's called a push. So they take the clamp off the tube that restricts how fast the water goes into her body. Okay, I need to set the stage for you. She has blood pressure at 280 over 180. So severe, the ambulance has been called to take her to an emergency room, and the first thing they do before a doctor even enters the room to evaluate her, they send a nurse in there. The instruction is, nurse the station, get in there and give her an IV bag push. Now, the push means do it now and do it quick. All right, so they go in there, take the clamp off that restricts how fast the salt water goes into her body. They took that off. Okay, listen to me, people. The FDA says... No more than 2,300 milligrams a day of salt. If you eat more than that, you're going to develop high blood pressure. Risk factors for strokes and heart attacks go up. Okay? If you do more than 2,300 milligrams. The American Heart Association says, no, 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 FDA. It's actually less than that. No one should eat more than 1,100 milligrams of salt a day. Listen, the bag they pushed in 20 minutes into my mother-in-law's veins who had 280 over 180 blood pressure, stroke level blood pressure. Every bag of salt water called saline or IV fluids has 9,000 milligrams of salt in it. That is nine, nine, that's nine times what the American Heart Association says. It is three times, or actually four times what the FDA says. So I just want you to know, they do this to her. I cannot believe this. I'm watching this. This is last year. I'm watching it. After I've already done these shows for years, I was watching this and I was like, <laughs> this is like the most dumb thing ever. She comes walking out of the room and I'm standing by the door. Dr. Artis is standing by the door. This little nurse comes walking by in her 20s and I went like this. Uh, you ever find it ironic that in your training in nursing school, they taught you that salt's bad for you and increases your risk for high blood pressure and strokes. And they bring this old lady in here who is, is at a stroke level blood pressure. And the first thing you did was just shove 9,000 milligrams of salt into her bloodstream before a doctor even comes in. I said, what's the irony to you? And the nurse looks at me and goes like this. Um, you know what, doc? They actually don't call it salt water nor do they reference salt when they talk about fluids they only call it fluids and she looks at me and says every time they ask me to do this i i'm always wondering why would you give this individual so much salt <laughs> even though that's not what the medical doctors and that's not what the hospital calls it they just say make sure the patient gets fluids the issue is that fluid has nine thousand milligrams of salt now this is interesting the medical profession knows salt's bad for you. They tell you it's bad for you. But right when you need them, whether in an ambulance, I'm, I'm talking about you right out In the UK, if you in Somerset had a heart attack and an ambulance came to pick you up, before you get to the hospital, you will have an IV drip of salt water going into your veins. Yeah. Before you even get there. Before a doctor walks in the room, does an EKG or ECG or any other testing on you, they're going to give you salt without question they know you need salt. Now, why do they know you need salt? Why do they know we need it? Yeah. Because they know everybody on earth is eating less salt than they need. They have actually created an entire culture globally of people, in industrialized nations anyway, to believe the less amount of salt, the better your health outcomes. They know they have pummeled us with propaganda in elementary schools, in our nurses' stations in those schools. They know that. Your medical doctors, billboards, advertising, everybody, celebrities have told you salt's bad for you, okay? Everybody's told you that. So they know everybody is deficient in salt, and they've created an entire society of people with increased blood pressure, increased risk of strokes and heart attacks, and the first thing you can do to them, without question, is pump them full of salt. And the moment they start pumping salt inside of them, guess what happens in the mind of the patient? Who is salt deficient? Immediately, emotionally, they feel better. 
Yeah. Mentally, they feel better. Yeah. Their heart palpitations start slowing down. Their kidneys start working better and they start releasing the excess urine and their blood pressure starts coming down. Every part of their life feels better. And all they got was salt. And that's before your medical doctor ever comes and talks to you. Now, this is the great setup. They know they have created an entire world of people who believe salt is bad for you. And everyone is primarily restricting the amount of salt in their daily intake. The moment they inject 9,000 milligrams of salt into any human being in an ambulance, in an ICU, in an emergency room, the moment that high amount of salt goes inside of you, your body as a mammal needs more salt. And the moment they give it to you, you are going to immediately start feeling better. And the illusion that the medical doctor helped you feel better in this medical building, in this medical mobile unit called an ambulance, you start thinking to yourself, thank God I called 911 or I called the medical doctor. Or, I went to the ER. Thank God for the medical institution. They made me feel better right away. This is before the medical doctor even walks in. Now, my mother-in-law, for example, is in the hospital. They do a 20-minute push. I asked the nurse. How do you feel about giving my mother-in-law 9,000 milligrams of salt when she has super high blood pressure on stroke level? And she's like, yeah, I always find it ironic. But you know, it's weird. They don't call it salt. They call it fluids. She walks out 20 minutes later, comes in because the bag's empty. That's 9,000 milligrams. Do you know what the next thing she does is? She has been instructed by the MD before she even comes in. He, the, the MD's never shown up yet. Before he gets there, he's telling the nurse to do another bag of salt water and do another push. Lady, this is 18,000 milligrams of salt in a woman, okay. my mother-in-law, this who had stroke level high blood pressure. And so the let, me just, let me ask you something. This push, her, her blood pressure started coming down. The moment they did the 18,000, wow. it started coming down. By the time he comes in, I'm like, oh my God, it's already 50 points lower than it was before we walked in on both levels. Okay, this is the impact of salt. They didn't even do any drugs or nothing. Isn't that amazing? I mean, this is mind-blowing. So then let me ask you this question. Where is the limit? Where's the crossover? When does it become too much salt? When does it become too much salt? Let's see. Maybe when your blood pressure gets to such an extremely low level, you're getting vertigo and dizzy. Okay. <laughs> then you need to back off. Okay. Because your body can take too much of everything, right? Right. I will tell you. 6,000 to 9,000 milligrams of salt is the perfect limit for almost every human being on earth. Every human needs 6,000 to 9,000 milligrams of salt. In an emergency situation, like a stroke level high blood pressure, like in the hospital scenario I just gave you, they can increase that amount, but only for a short time. They only did that once. They did yes. that before the doctor even got in there and it yeah. brought, started bringing her blood pressure back down and that started to work. They never had to give her 18,000 again. They... I, if I could get her to listen and trust me over the MDs, which she doesn't, <laughs> if I could get her to trust me, even with these discussions in front of her, she still believes the MDs, which is quite funny, that the salt is bad for you. They just happen to be using water and her thoughts or processes or fluids to help her. Yeah. her I don't know. I don't know what, what she thinks, how this helped. But we're talking about and explaining it to her the whole time. Uh, just recognize the medical profession that continues to tell you worldwide that salt is bad for you uses the same thing they're telling you is bad for you as their first <laughs> treatment in every scenario you're going to find yourself in. If you in Somerset had a heart attack right now, call 911. They're going to come to your house, yeah. pick you up, and start injecting 9,000 milligrams of salt inside of you immediately. They're not yeah. even going to talk to anybody. They know you need salt. Why does the medical profession know you need salt? Because they've been lying to you the whole time that salt's bad for you, and they know it. <laughs> They know they've been lying to you. They know they've got the entire food industry and medical doctor industry convinced in the lie. And they're all telling the same lie. Okay. So what we're interested in, right, is taking, our, um, taking it back into our hands, our health, taking responsibility for our health as individuals. That's what I'm interested in Ayurveda as well. And Amen. so what do we now do with this knowledge? How do we use salt in our life? Yeah, it's great. So very first thing is, if the very first thing is we all have to do is come to terms with reality. And the truth is nothing is more powerful than our own belief systems. Mm. This is why it is 
it is so well known that propaganda and repeated lies are so powerful. Because if you can get an individual to believe a narrative, oh my goodness, have you not heard of the placebo effect or the nocebo effect? Uh, it is absolutely proven. You can get people to believe, even if you didn't do surgery on them, that you did surgery on them. You just put them on anesthesia, wake them up, tell them you did the surgery, but you never did. And these people go off and behave like they actually had the surgery. And they actually don't. They go through rehab, skip rehab, and they're all well. But they never actually had surgery. This is the power of the belief system of the mind. Yeah. So the very first thing we need to do is give people information to increase their confidence in their own belief systems or values that are crossing their mind every day. Mm, so as they listen to this podcast that. and I tell you that salt was confirmed worldwide that the more salt you consume, the better your blood pressure and lower your risk factors for heart attacks and diseases are. <laughs> the very first thing you should want to do, I would hope, is actually check and see if if what I'm saying is true. All you got to do is go look up 2016 on any internet search engine, type in 2016 Tel Aviv salt study or sodium study and Lancet, maybe throw it in there. The study is going to pop right up and go read it. And then you can read on the top of the actual research paper where the American Heart Association threatened them. The Lancet made sure to include it and put that paragraph at the very top of the study. Uh, the American Heart Association threatened us to retract this study. And if we didn't, our funding would be threatened, blah, blah, blah. They put that all on there. And then they put oh, yeah. retracted across the stop the across the top because they were threatened, but the entire study is still sitting there. Just go read it. And as you actually build more confidence through knowledge, mm. just go study this stuff. And then think to yourself, the medical profession that is telling you salt's bad for you in every scenario. Put yourself in every scenario at a hospital ever. And then remember walking down the hospital hallway, looking in every room that has an open door, you're going to see a patient in a bed and you're going to see an IV stand right next to them. A hundred percent of all the patients. What are they pumping into every sick person on the planet that they are telling you in the media is bad for you? Every person, the entire day they're in there is being pumped full of salt. Right. The whole time. It's not like for an hour. No, it's all 24 hours. They're being pumped full of salt the whole time. The one thing they're telling you is bad for you. It's not bad for you. Yeah. Use logic, use common sense and rationale. Remember, in, in England, are there any people that ranch animals, mammals? Yeah, cows. About animals? yeah, lots of cows. This is a big cow area, Somerset. Yeah. Do any of those ranchers have salt licks? I'm sure. Yeah. Is it common knowledge that I farmers who ranch mammals buy yeah. blocks of salt and sit it in the yard of every single animal field of any kind. Every animal, I don't care if it's pigs, deer, uh, alpaca, cows, goats, every farmer knows you have to have a salt lick out there. And and they don't, they don't restrict how much salt the animals eat. The animals know they need salt. So they just walk over and lick it multiple times a day. I need more salt. I need more salt. Why? All mammals need salt. It's yeah. so weird that we have fallen for this lie. It is just a lie. No, this is, I, I just want to highlight something you said before as well about the confidence. So in Ayurveda, it's a really important thing for me, like immunity, health is confidence. It's cellular confidence, knowing what is for you, what is not for you. When we take that out, when we doubt ourselves on a cellular level, then we're opening ourselves to, to all manner of dysfunction, disease. Absolutely. So this is an interesting thing of actually the the mentality behind it of making people doubt themselves, you know? Yeah, it even goes a little bit further. Can we expand on this topic of salt? Yeah, please. All right, so we can we convince people that salt's bad for you, so don't consume too much salt. Re always restrict your salt. <laughs> We're just going to call it fluids every time you walk into one of our buildings feeling yeah. bad. It doesn't matter if you have migraines or anything. Just think about it. It doesn't matter if you have cancer, if you have a brain tumor, if you have high blood pressure, strokes, heart attacks, you have a bullet in your chest, they're all going to start injecting you with salt immediately. This is just to be a random weird thought to you now that you see it. You're like, oh my God, now that I see it. They actually do know salt's bad for you. In fact, if a medical doctor's in the hospital room with you, with a loved one and you, I don't care if you're the patient or the family member, I want you to look at your MD ever and go like this. Hey doc, I just have a question. Don't even tell them why you're going to ask it. Just go, hey, I've got a random question. Is salt bad for you? Or good for you? Just ask the question. I guarantee you every medical doctor is going to immediately spit out the lie that they've been indoctrinated with, just like you. They're going to go, oh, salt's definitely bad for you, and you should restrict how much salt you put inside your body every day. 
then I want you to go like this. Well, if it's so bad for me and for my loved ones, why, why are you pumping 9,000 milligrams of salt every day that he's in here? That's more than the FDA says we should have every day by like four times. Why, why are you all pumping salt inside of every patient? My loved one, if it's bad for him. I mean, it's going to shatter their belief systems and they have no idea. They're just going along with the cult indo- indoctrination. They're just following the dogma and they're repeating something illogical and they don't even know it. This is how far reaching the propaganda right. and the indoctrination yeah. of lies is. All right, so here we go. Let's set this up for everybody. This is very important. This is something I learned just the last two years that I had no idea about. All right, so the drug companies figure out that they can manipulate physiology and lower blood pressure. So now the drug companies in the early 1900s have to figure out a way to sell to the medical industry uh, ways to manipulate blood pressure. So they come up with, let's bastardize salt. So they do. Right. And they lie to everybody. And I mean everybody. The medical profession, everybody. That salt intake increases blood pressure and increases risk of strokes and heart attacks. This gets the attention of the American Heart Association. The drug company tells the American Heart Association, uh, if you will help us to tell the world to reduce salt intake, we will also let you know we've created some drugs that can actually lower blood pressure. And these drugs, if you'll help us promote these, will, will, if you'll help us to lower salt intake worldwide with propaganda and marketing, we have drugs that the medical doctors can now sell their patients to lower their blood pressure as their blood pressure goes up for whatever reason in life. But we can't have them eaten salt. But if you'll sell our drugs... We will give proceeds and revenue and funding to the American Heart Association. We'll also give incentives and commissions and royalties to every medical doctor who fills those prescriptions and writes those prescriptions to your patients with high blood pressure. As long as you, the American Heart Association, continue to cover up the lie that salt is bad for you. Okay, you got to cover that. You got to continue to promote that and cover up the lie that salt actually is required by life. Now, this is where it gets really disgusting, in my opinion. First thing they do is they create drugs that are identical to salt and they sell it to the medical doctors. Those drugs are called diuretics, They're like Lasix is an example. These are actually patented salt and they're just putting them in little orange pill bottles and medical doctors are now selling you a form of salt because they don't want you eating salt because they figured out a way to patent salt. They call it Lasix. They call it a diuretic drug. What do Lasix do? And lots of people in England and America are on high blood pressure drugs called Lasix. All it does is make your kidneys urinate. Oh, remember, salt does that. So they're giving you a fake salt. It's increasing how fast the kidney's urinating, lowering water retention, and you're seeing your blood pressure come down. But not forever. Eventually, your kidneys are going to shut down from the drug because it's not a natural substance, and you have to continue increasing the Lasix. You don't have to do it with salt because that's a natural substance. That's what you have to do with the drugs. Come 1981, drug companies start telling medical doctors they have a new blood pressure drug called ACE inhibitors. Hmm. The first drug is introduced. It's called Captopril, C-A-P-T-O-P-R-I-L. And they start telling the American Heart Association and every medical doctor on earth treating high blood pressure that there's a new drug called Captopril that can lower blood pressure. And it... It actually binds to your blood vessels, relaxes them to lower blood pressure. So now we've convinced people for decades at this point in 1981 to reduce salt intake and use Lasix, which is patented salt, and it's a drug. Okay, great. You got a whole bunch of people doing that. Now the medical profession and the pharmaceutical drug companies tell the medical profession, we've got a new drug that is called Captopril. That's an ACE inhibitor. Now every drug that ends with Pril, P-R-I-L, are all ACE inhibitors made from the same thing. Do you know what it's made from? What is it made from? Every ACE inhibitor drug that ends with the abbreviation PRIL, lisinopril, enalapril, captopril, since 1981, all of them are actually made from their little dry pills that you swallow that's made from venom from a snake in Brazil called the Jaracus viper. All right, now this is crazy. This is crazy. You're all swallowing snake venom every day to lower your blood pressure. The actual venom component is called a neurotoxin. It binds to nerves that control muscle. 
and all your blood vessels are muscle. So now they've convinced you not to eat salt. Now they've convinced you to swallow their salt they prescribe to you called Lasix. Then they introduce high blood pressure drugs made from snake venom. This is my problem. Not only does reducing salt in that narrative increase high blood pressure and heart attacks and stroke victims in America and support the entire heart disease industry, all of it, the medical industry, then you sell Lasix that causes over time kidney failure. They know it does that. And now you feed an entire dialysis industry worldwide. Then you introduce venom-based drugs called lisinopril, captopril, and allopril, ACE inhibitor drugs. All of them are made from venom. Now, my problem with these venom drugs are 1956, two doctors, one named Rita and one named Stanley Cohen, discover in 1956, if you put any snake venom in a mammal's body from a snake, it will cause cancer in every tissue of the human body. And they called it an invisible side effect of venom in 1956. And they call it epidermal growth factor. That's what they called it in 1961. In 1956, they said they found that snake venom causes uh, nerve tumors in the brain and spinal cords of all mammals and chickens. And they called that nerve growth factor. These two people in 1956 and 1961 discover that snake venom put inside a mammal causes cancers of every kind, skin cancers, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, liver cancer, prostate cancer, and brain cancer. They already know this and they publish it. Come 1981, they start selling the whole world people that they've lied to about salt. They're now telling them to all take ACE inhibitor drugs made from venom of a snake in Brazil that causes cancer. They know it causes cancer. In fact, they're so confident that venom in a human causes all cancers that they gave these two guys, Dr. Stanley Cohen and Rita, they gave them the Nobel Prize in Medicine for this discovery in 1986. <laughs> for discovering that venom in a human will cause cancer in every tissue in the human body. I just want my arms stand up. So now you have an entire oh, industry creating kidney failure and dialysis patients, worsening stroke and heart attacks by telling them a great lie to lower your salt intake every day and only buy our salt in a prescription bottle. Now we want you swallowing snake venom every day, but the pharmaceutical companies never told the American Heart Association, nor did they ever tell an MD in the world that what you're prescribing is snake venom in a pill form since 1981 just so you know 22 million americans this morning swallowed snake venom called lisinopril alone every single person who has ever taken any kind of ace inhibitor drug for high blood pressure all of them eventually will develop some form of cancer all of them in fact any of you who have a loved one or a grandparent you want to do some history go into your grandma and grandpa's medical history or journals and find out what ACE inhibitor drug they were put on before they ever developed cancer and type in the name of that drug in a Google search, type in lisinopril and your grandmother was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Great. Go type it in your mom's ACE inhibitor drug. Let's say she, let's say you find out she was on lisinopril type in lisinopril and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And you will find one study after another that ACE inhibitor drugs made from snake venom, all of them cause every single cancer you and your loved ones ever struggled emotionally, physically, and financially to treat. It was actually being created by the same drugs based off the same lie. And Joseph Goebbels was right over, you know, almost a hundred years ago when he said, tell a lie loud enough and repeat it often enough. And the people will believe it. Yep. Just like this one. You all fell for it. We all fell for it without looking. Salt's bad for you. Even though all of life requires salt. It's so okay. weird. What do we do now? What do we do now? So what if someone's on these drugs, the prills, the ACE inhibitors? Yeah, the very first thing you're going to do, and this is what I've told every single patient in my practice for 20 years, if they were on a high blood pressure drug and came into my practice, I would say this, great, what's your goal, lady or young man? And they would say, I want to get off these drugs. Great. Well, I didn't give you those drugs. This is what I'd say to them. Well, I didn't give you those drugs. Who gave you those drugs? Oh, my MD did. Great. You need to go tell your MD to get you off those drugs. 
That's your first thing. You're going to go tell your MD you want to get off these drugs. Great. And will you help me get off the drugs? And the moment your MD tells you, yes, say thank you for loving me enough and being caring enough to help me. For every other MD that looks at you and says, no, I'm not going to do that. And you can't come off your drugs. And if you do, I'm going to fire you. You kiss them goodbye and you walk out and you go find another MD to help you. I mean, this is exactly, or you yourself go home and go, you know what? I'm going to learn how to do this on my own because my MD won't help me. All right. So number one rule, never stop any drugs except for cholesterol drugs immediately. Mm. You can stop all cholesterol drugs immediately. Mm. You cannot stop any other drugs I'm aware of immediately. Our bodies have become dependent on them and they're changing your chemistry. So you have to just come off of them slowly. What's the best way in general to do it? Cut your dose in half you're doing today and do that for two weeks. And then take that drug at two weeks. And if you still feel fine and stable, great. Cut it in half after that, the dose you're taking. Keep cutting it in half by every two weeks. And you can slowly titrate and get your physiology of your body ready to be normal without the drugs interference. Yeah. So you can do it slowly on your own. You can find herbalists, chiropractors, acupuncturists, Ayurvedic medicines, holistic practitioners to help guide you and coach you through that process. Yeah. But no, they are not responsible for the interactions of the drugs and your withdrawals. If you have decided to come off that drug and you want to, which everybody should, if that's something you now decide you want to do to lower your risk factor for high blood pressure, strokes, heart attacks, death, and cancer, this is a great idea. Come off the poisons. But if your medical professionals aren't willing to help you, there are people willing to help you. We'll oversee you, guide you, help you, yeah. coach you, but you have to do it very slow. And people, you need to start recognizing that you yourself know more about how your body's behaving and how it feels than any professional yes. on earth. Yes. No one knows you better than you. Yeah. They don't want you to know that. But if you start, for example, cutting down your blood pressure drug by half, and let's just say, you, you take it half a dose every single day. You've got lisinopril and you're like, you know what? I want to get off this thing. I'm going to start increasing my salt intake up to, I'm, I'm not doing any salt right now. So I'm going to do 3000 milligrams a day for this first two weeks. I'm going to cut my lisinopril in half. Great. Do that. And then do that for two weeks. If you see by day three that, oh my God, your blood pressure is coming down. Your energy is up. You're feeling great. Good. Just keep going. And as long as you're feeling better, just keep staying on the same dosage. If by day three, you're having an extreme migraine headache and you've never had migraines before, this could be a withdrawal side effect that would tell you you're coming off of it too fast. Mm. So instead of doing a half the next day, you're going to do three quarters and see if you feel better with three quarters over several days, doing your 3000 milligrams of salt or whatever amount you decide to increase to and do that same amount every day for two weeks. The moment you can tell that your body is feeling pretty normal and pretty well and blood pressure is doing okay and I'm not having any headaches or spikes in energy or lack of energy. Good. You did that for two weeks. Now let's see if your body can come down to the half Mm. of a dose you started two weeks earlier that you got a migraine from. And this time you do it and you don't get a migraine and you feel just fine for the next two weeks. Oh my God, you did it slow enough. And you can do this on your own. So this is also building confidence. It's building confidence and building sovereignty understanding exactly right. yourself this is ayurveda too so can we flip yeah. very quickly back to salt um it's so fascinating all of this so in terms of salt intake do you think there are different qualities of salt that need to be taken absolutely is there a I difference? Do. yep absolutely so uh, i absolutely prefer all things natural that came from the earth personally so you've got himalayan sea salts you've got celtic salts you are very knowledgeable in salts and <laughs> different forms of salts how to produce different formulations yeah. of salt, increasing sulfur contents of salts. I'm aware of it's been very helpful and very cool to watch. So yes, there are various kinds of salts out. I want to, I want to talk about salt real quick too. And the fact that salt table salt used to be iodized salt, right? Meaning they used to take salt crystals, they would mine and then wrap it in iodine. Well, about 20 years ago, Now, you have to understand, this was actually a double-edged sword when they did this. When they came out and said, we're no longer going to actually take, we think Morton even said this, Morton Salt said, you know what? Sea salt's better than iodized salt. They even said this. And they said, we're going to now take out iodine of a lot of our table salt, and we're going to give you sea salt. Sea salt's better for you. You have to understand, there was a lie behind this marketing campaign. 
Do you know what the lie was? When they took out iodine, it wasn't because they thought sea salt was better for you. What benefit to the pharmaceutical industry would there be if you took iodine out of everybody they're taking every day? Mm-hmm. You have to understand the pharmaceutical industry 100% needs you to buy their drugs. So everything they tell you is a flat out lie. You just have to go study the lie. In fact, if you take iodine out of salt and then tell everybody to eat salt that doesn't have iodine, and we're going to call it Celtic salt, sea salt, then this is better for you. (laughs) I'm not kidding. Everybody's like, oh, sweet. Okay, good. Let's go to sea salt. That sounds more natural. The world wants more natural products. This is great. Good. I don't know. They just totally set up the whole world that eats table salt to develop a new disease because they took out iodine thyroid right they now have created an entire society of more people to develop hypothyroidism where their thyroid now is no longer functioning and when that happens and everybody's not getting iodine anymore and they can't make enough thyroid hormone anymore Chronic fatigue, infertility, menopausal symptoms, uh, cramps, menstrual problems, all that's going to become exacerbated. When you go to your medical doctor and you tell them, "Um, I'm having severe hot flashes and I can't control my weight anymore. I'm just putting on weight and I'm depressed. What's your MD going to tell you when they run your blood work? Oh, Barry, you have low thyroid hormones. And what's the next thing out of their mouth? Here you go. Here's your thyroid medication. You have a under-functioning thyroid. And the whole thing was a setup. The pharmaceutical industry convinced Morton Salt, hey, we need you to take that iodine out of there and start telling people that sea salt's better and it's all natural. Okay, great. And that helps the pharmaceutical industry sell you Nature Thyroid, Synthroid, Levothyroxine, every single thyroid replacement drug you can think of. So this is the lie. Uh, And it just continues to lie. But there are absolutely better salt sources than others. Those from nature, those from the ocean, those from glaciers and the mountains, you name it. Himalayan sea salt. You've got all kinds of great salts that are better for you. You just yeah. can't ignore the minerals. And I want to say this real quick. Mm. Do you remember in school, I'm sure in the UK, did you guys learn the periodic table of elements? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what My the mother. periodic table of elements was? No, there it is. Have, have, <laughs> do you remember learning what the periodic table of elements represents? Like, why was this ever gathered and put together? What does it represent? All the elements in the world. All the elements in the world that actually contribute to life on Earth. Yes. Okay. On the periodic table of elements are all the basic elements in nature that life requires to exist. Is salt on the periodic table of elements? Yes. Yes. Is iodine yes. on the periodic table of elements? Good. Is magnesium yeah, on yes. the periodic table? Oh. <laughs> Is selenium on there? Yeah. Is calcium on there? Mm-hmm. Good. So this is your periodic table of elements. I'd like to ask you another question. Is lisinopril on there? No. No. Is ozempic on there? <laughs> no. Is aspirin on there? No. Is Lasix on there? No. But salt is on there. Oh, really? Guess what life requires? It requires salt. Oh, it also requires magnesium and selenium and zinc. So when I say salt is good for you, I make sure I consume every single day at least 7,000 milligrams of salt. That's the bare minimum. How do you do it? Tell us how you do it. Yeah. So I make sure that I add salt to our bone broths, to our broths, our soups, or even add them to my juices. I add them to my fruits. I add salt to everything. My meats I cook because I do not do vegan anything. I eat meat, grass-fed meat. I actually add salt to my, I actually grill with salt. I actually put salt everywhere. I always make Dane and I have drinks actually that I drink and formulated for myself eight years ago that have over 1500 milligrams of salt in each packet. So yeah. you can get salt. There's a, there's actually bags of promoted salt hydrate drinks like liquid IV yeah. and others that actually give yeah. you thousands of milligrams of salt. There's yeah. an easy way to get the salt. So I make sure I always have salt in every aspect of my diet, but I don't ignore that I need iodine that I need magnesium, that I need selenium, and the other minerals that are on the periodic table of elements. And so we make sure we eat bee pollen every day that has 84 minerals and vitamins that are 
All the minerals are on the periodic table elements. They're in the bee pollen, nature's own multivitamin. So right. make sure we have that every single day because I don't want to ignore it. I also supplement from kelp. Yeah. Iodine Love every it. single day. Yeah. I just do, I just, I have my own kelp supplement with iodine. So I just take it every single day. I have groups of minerals and herbs that I take uh, every single day to try to keep and maintain a healthy life free of symptoms. The entire goal is to free you from symptoms and free you from the bondage and requirement mm. of pharmaceutical drugs. Yes. If we can free you from that. Uh, I mean, I just think uh, God's greatest gift he ever gave men was the ability to choose. You should have right. the right to choose nature over pharmaceuticals. But right. the pharmaceutical industry will tell you you don't have an option. It's just us. Well, the natural world will tell you if it's a life emergency, you do need the medical profession at times, but you should be taking care of your own health every single day. Yes. You have the choice to do that. And absolutely. that's exactly what we should always be preaching 24-7. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen to that. Amen um, to that. Yeah. Well, this has been so interesting. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful wisdom with us. Um, You're very welcome. Is there anything else just before we wrap it up that you want to share? I want to share. Uh, yeah, you should hang out with this chick in Somerset, UK. Oh, more, 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 because uh, she's got some great information and obviously has been studying for some time what is the reality of health and nature and how does the how does the body function as God intended it or created. And, and I'll say that even when I say that, I say this all the time from stages all over the world. I tell them, I say, look, uh, you have the right to choose what it is you want to believe in. However, life dictates there are certain things the human body requires and it cannot live without them. The body requires air, water, and food. It cannot live without those three things. So it will eventually die with any of those three that you deplete of from it. So the quality of your life experience is determined by the quality of the air you breathe, the water you drink, and what you put in your mm. mouth as food. So remember, the body and life requires, human beings require air, water, and food to survive. They do not require, and I've never heard it said, maybe you have, I've never heard it said that human life requires air, water, food, and prescription drugs. Mm. You've never heard that. Right. You've heard air, water, and food your entire life. So right. the higher, the better quality of food you eat, water and yes. air you're consuming every single day, the better your quality yes. of life is going to be. It's how life is designed. Right. So chip away at removing processed foods that are not natural. Remove sodas from your life because no animal in nature on Mother Earth migrates across continents looking for Dr. Pepper. <laughs> It doesn't do that. No, no, no animal on earth goes looking for Dr. Pepper or alcohol. Or, they don't do that. No, they all go looking for water, fresh water. They all want water. Right. And in fact, they go looking for water in ponds all over Africa and all over the world. All these animals migrate and look for fresh water. When they look for water, they find it in ponds. They find it in mud holes. Do you know what those mud holes have in the water? Minerals. Minerals. Right. That water is mineral rich. Yes. Why? What are minerals? Minerals are metals. Metals are found in the dirt. So if you put water in the dirt and you can't even see through that clear water, you ever wonder why an elephant walks over and sucks up mud looking water and just swallows it down? Yeah, because they know in that dirty water is the salt they need, the calcium they need, the magnesium they need, the selenium they need, the zinc they need, and the water they need. So life knows how to feed itself. They have continued for eons continuing yes. to thrive and procreate on this earth. Human beings have been here for forever. Do you know how long pharmaceutical industry has been around? Only 140 years. How did life and human beings survive for millions of years or thousands of years, whatever you believe, before pharmacy, pharmacy showed up? Right. I love this. Yeah. 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 You need to, I would always doubt what pharmacy and pharmacia tells you, yeah. what medical professionals tell you. Just question what they say and go do your own research. Right. And then I would plead with you to do what I do. Ask God, spend time in meditation and prayer and ask him, is what the medical doctor or what Dr. Artis said in this podcast, is it true? Yeah. Uh, for me. Oh, yeah, I is agree. It true for me. Yeah. And I absolutely 100% believe that all of you have a spirit God gave you 
if he created you and the spirit that's inside of you. And he will touch moments of peace and inspiration to help guide you in this tumultuous mortality world we live in, full of deception and lies. Because I always put more faith in God's creation than science, and it has worked out. I have five kids, four adults. None of them have ever been vaccinated. They've been in universities, public schools, have never gotten a vaccine ever. And none of them have a medical diagnosis of any kind. None are on a prescription drug. None have ever even been on an antibiotic. That's been the life of my family for 22 years. Amazing. Amazing. And yet all of my kids should have been dead. And you would have been told in the media they would have had measles by now, polio by now. They would have had hepatitis B by now. I mean, they would have told you all these things that they told you they needed to be vaccinated for. DTAP, MMR, all of that stuff. You would be told that my kids are more susceptible to all of those diseases. It's interesting. They yeah, don't even get cold very, flu. This is, this, is, this is another conversation, I think, because yeah, we could go, we could go uh, very deep on this one. It's very Everybody needs more salt, and my kids get salt every day, and I make sure they do, and they're all right. very healthy. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, you've all been lied to. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, wonderful. Well, listen, it's, it's been wonderful. an absolute delight speaking with you, and thank you so much for sharing all this knowledge and wisdom and making us think and do our own research. This is the key. To learn more about Dr. Ardis and his work, do go to his website. That's the drardisshow.com. T H E D R A R D I S S H O W.com. Living Medicine was sponsored by Pure Living. To find out more about Pure Living and its products, go to pureliving.com. That's P I O R living.com.